This is really the fighter and the kid. Come on, baby. Deep Mike five. Catherwood, uh, our guest, our friend of the show, our longtime friend. Austin Local. Uh, not an Austin Local, but he's out, uh, he's out in the outskirts of Austin on a farm with 70 animals. I don't know if you know yeah. this. I know. You're talking about a man who has got guinea fowl. Don't even know what those are. They're <laughs> jack turkeys, apparently. Uh, small. He's got chickens. He's got goats. He's got two donkeys. He's got two great Pyrenees. Those are dogs. Bring up a great Pyrenees. He's got two of them. They keep the coyotes from wiping you out. But I like that you came to like Texas and you yeah. did Texas style. Full, you're not no. in like a, a you know you're not in some high rise or like in the trendy community. Like you came to Texas and. You're like yelling people to get off your porch. You farm well, thank strong. You. you farm strong. You country strong. Yeah, and 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 there's especially considering how many people like from coastal towns came to Austin, and they essentially just live the same life in it's California kind of, it on Congress no Street. Yeah, it makes no sense. Um, no, yeah. we came to Texas and wanted to, and we I, admittedly were like LARPing for the first six months, and now yeah. I feel like I'm. A, I can legitimately talk about being a farmer. And well, you, you got you, your skin. You don't farmer. need sunblock. Your skin can take the sun. You can take the rays. I've never worn uh, sun no, no, tan. No, you got that. You got I don't that believe good in... Mexican. Yeah. Good Mexican genetics with that wonderful hair. Thank you, sir. Sun, you're, sunscreen's you're a... a scam, right? Is it not yeah, for me? So. Not for guys like me. I get toasty red. I hear a lot of really credible people say that, but I always, I always like to remind myself, especially if I'm going to say it to a, a broadcast. I'm f- so fucking dumb. Like, I am not the right person to say any of that. Like, the mercury in it. Uh, the, I don't know. I don't fucking know. I just know that since I was a little kid, I never put anything on my skin. I don't even like the feeling of, like, lotion on my hate, body. I can't do I don't want, Not the one of you guys. It. Both you boys can sit in the sun forever. You yeah. guys got some dark, dark. It's big brown right here, dude. Got a lot, yeah. Got yeah. a lot of melanin. A couple, couple brownies. couple browns over here. A couple here. brownies. Now, listen. Now, now, I need to know more. I'm, I'm fascinated with the idea that you're actually out there. In this heat, yeah, feeding animals, yeah. patrolling your grounds with your Pyrenees, and keeping the coyotes at bay. Are you look eating, at that? That's are a great, you, Bubba, are you look at eating that. the animals too? Look at that great Pyrenees. That's what he has. We know what Pyrenees Those looks are, like, buddy. We, oh, okay. um, yeah, everyone, we have two. Hey, hey, everyone does. I don't think so. Oh yeah, most people dogs. Don't. Yeah, most people aren't like, oh yeah, great Pyrenees. Pyrenees? Yeah, that's a giant. Look at that thing. But but are you killing animals too? <clears throat> uh, like, not going, not our own. I kill the other ones that come on the the land to get my animals. Like, like what? Like where we talk about here? Coyotes. Most coyotes, and uh, I don't like to shoot at birds because I'm not. I, I've worked at it to be better, but I'm not super comfortable with my accuracy, so I don't want to shoot in the air. In the air, get a machine. I do that with yeah. a bow and arrow. Yeah, yeah, okay. Uh, from horseback, that. but that's what that's because I studied. <laughs> You're a real man. Yeah. I do it with a spear. But I, I um, yeah, you do it in the spear. Before we got the Pyrenees, we've only had them about eight months. Um, Waylon and Willie brothers. Uh, I, I had to shoot. Lots of coyotes, yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. But, but do the birds, are they that big of a nuisance? The birds are way bigger, in my opinion, because coyotes, they kind of live the same way we do. They walk on feet, and they have to be on land, and they have eyeballs. The birds are so, – the owls and some of these birds Silent. are so Silent. effective at being predators. They got one – my indoor dog, not the Great Pyrenees, but we have indoor dogs as well. They're <gasps> normal people dogs. An owl got your indoor and, dog? And what? even the vet said – like I don't. It's by the grace of God that this thing lived. It got it, and the claws went in its neck and ripped it. And the sound—I'll never forget it. I mean, it's it, honestly. I, I hate to sound like a a big wimp, but the sound he was making when it was attacking him—I'll never. It was well, the thing of your nightmare. Alive. Yeah, it was the thing what of your kind nightmare. Kind of dog, like a little terrier. You like can't have that, huh? Because a bird of prey grabs an eagle or something. Or it, a hawk? I, they, they, we, you know, professionals like looked at the cuts and stuff. They. I think it was probably an owl. Dude, this is some an Texas owl. shit. Yeah. Bro. Uh, uh, dude, a Texas owl. Big old owl is not taking that. It's not, they take cats. People don't realize that. You can see it on the internet. They take cats. It, it's, and the, <clears throat> the, the gripping power and the, their ability to be quality predators because of their eyesight, because of their patience, because of their intellect. And they can just hide out in the trees. What color so I, was the dog? He's like brown and white. So mm-hmm. I, went, I went hunting for yeah, squirrels. They're coming after me. I went yeah. hunting with squirrels with red tail <laughs> hawks. Squirrels. Yeah. You go hunting. You bang the trees. They jump out of their nest. I, I didn't like it, but squirrels are the most athletic motherfuckers. But they these, still are. These these red tail hawks would grab them and start eating them right away. They they don't kill them. They just start eating. They yeah. just start ripping. Hey, what group it's of awful. guys get together to hunt squirrels? It was it was. Uh, my wife thought you it'd guys be a hunt, cool right? thing to do. You guys get together on a Saturday and hunt squirrels. Uh, no. I don't like it. <laughs> I didn't like it. But oh, here's the thing: the red tail hawks. A lot of times. 
They'll 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 be like they'll be flying and they all of a sudden they see a snake and they grab the snake. Oh or they'll yeah, they grab a rabbit. Or they, oh, yeah. they just anything on the ground is in anything on the ground is always in living terror of birds of prey. Birds of prey are the silent killers. Hey, no. you'll love this. You know how I've been. I mean, he's, we're always boys, like we're in the same community. But me and Doctor Drew, yeah, have been talking so much because <laughs> his son Douglas, yeah, I love is Douglas. a manager now. So I met with Douglas the other day. He's such a smart. You, dude, and he's crushing it. They, you know, Drew and his wife Susan have triplets, okay? And every one of them is the, the type of young person that you go like, fuck, hey, you fucking, at like Columbia, Vanderbilt. Then yep. they like, oh, I am also like classically trained violinist who Lawyers, writes, like, you know, writes a blog post about like esoteric things. Like I all of them it. are, and, and they're so like. I love, I love well, Drew. Man, Drew's great. The best. Drew, Drew, Dr. Drew is and I, you know, it's so hard because, especially now with medical stuff after, after you know, the, the lockdowns, everyone loves to hate on Drew because he has, A, the capability, but also, like, he has the balls to kind of put his opinions out there. He's also right. Trained medical. I, now, in hindsight, think, he's also you know? right. But, you know, I, you just see so much vitriol for Dr. Drew, and it, and it transcends beyond, like, we're professional we're colleagues where i see it and i go like oh that's not fair he's my boy like i see that shit and i'm like i'm gonna fucking ring you know and yeah. like because i don't know what the fuck it's the only thing about. that gets me to start writing out those retort texts yeah. or yeah. the tweets and i go yeah. you know what it's yeah. not yeah. even she worth it. Punch yeah. the ocean it doesn't help for drew. it doesn't it just exactly it more. it's not helping him because they know if they can get a reaction out of you but drew's the there's he's salt the best. of the earth the he's best the best the absolute yeah. best and you so 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 are you a are you a straight up farmer right now yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, I'm What's a your day? farmer. So that, I have that a fantasy in my off time does podcasts. But I, I have a fantasy of like I go out, I milk my goats, yeah. and then I have a, a fresh glass of goat milk. I get some eggs. I have my coffee. Not for and you. I'm looking at my hands. Hey, not for That's you. not the reality of farmer. No, you hunt squirrels. That happens. Hey man, huh? that happens. Yeah. But on top of that, you also got to think about like the bales of hay and alfalfa that go to the sheep and goat. Then you got to go down to the guinea shed. And you know, let them out so they can forage at a certain time. Then get, make sure they get put back in the water. And water for watch, everyone. You got to watch as they're foraging for for El, El Hawko. The great the Great Pyrenees have taken care of pretty much everything except for snakes. Snakes are bastards. Really? Yeah, because you can't you can't account for that. You know, we're talking about like rattlesnakes. No, the mostly Gopher rat snakes, snakes out where we are. But they're That's big. They're not particularly dangerous, but they look gnarly yeah. and they eat eggs. They'll get into your coop and they'll just wipe you out of eggs. And it's like the cartoons, literally. Like oh, you see oh. the the bumps. Seriously? Yeah, it's crazy. So snakes have taken all your fucking eggs. Not all of them, but yes, they'll so, they'll get in there and, and they're so like they're they're they do the it at ones, night. I, it, it, either or, whatever, dude. D- that, that's snakes are. I respect the game. I hate you, but I have to respect. Yeah, your, your yeah. game. Because they're some so and they'll it's figure like out WNBA. the smallest hole in a in a in a fence that you put up. They'll fucking crawl through. There's some shit. You, hey, it sounds like you got some acres, Daddy. You got some land. Uh, just under nine acres. Nine yeah. acres. Yeah, which is like I'm sure there's real farmers out there listening, like, oh, silly boy. But for me, I grew up in L.A. If yeah. you had a half an acre, you were Steven Ball. Spielberg. Yeah, you're bald. You know? like, yeah. 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 You're saying the yeah. great you're Tom Pyrenees, Hanks. The Great yeah. Pyrenees keep the hawks out of the way too. M- for the most part, I mean, Damn. I'm sure the get off the Pyrenees. The, no, huh? I like it. <laughs> no, I like it. Dogs. My wife and I said, if if we knew that we could have dogs like this, we would never have bought other dogs. Like, w- I grew up always having dogs. But Great Pyrenees, it's a whole different More thing. than German Shepherds or anything like that? I, yeah, name a dog. I had a, yeah, I had yeah. a German Shepherd. My sister hey, was living with us at the time, her and her husband, and they, he had a police-trained uh, German Shepherd. And yeah. that thing was amazing. This is different in that it's not, it's not just the intellect. It's a primal evolutionary. Protect, like, you know how you throw a puppy Labrador? You just throw it in the pool? Yeah. It knows how to swim? Yeah. This just knows to protect. And stay by your side, or, or kids. walks with the. It impossible. And so, are they protective the against uh, people too? They don't fuck. With. It, but and it's like they sense it. Like yeah. sometimes the other day we had um, the HVAC guy, the air conditioning fella, come out because we were having malfunction with it, and you can't have it in this weather. Um, and he came out, and there was something about him. They didn't like white fella, but we have yeah yeah. yeah. Hey, hey, not a racist dog. Fuck, not a racist dog. Not a racist dog. Not a racist dog. English bulldog. How did English bulldog get? Whenever a black guy came over, he just freaked the All fuck right, out, man. I think it's the English. Well, I don't know. Get your dog. I didn't know he's yeah, Damn, racist. Dude. I know. You said it like this. You go white guy. 
You know, I was trying to see what the there, is. that was a little. There was a little area. Yeah, yeah. There was a yeah. little area. Yeah, and I a knew bit that. of that. Yeah, with yeah. That, yeah, yeah. That questioning. Yeah. That line of questioning. Do your kids like the farm life? I, I only have one daughter, but she she loves it. And then also, you know, I've tried to be really committed to always checking with her because that's such a wild transition yeah. from being in Venice Beach to yeah. to this. <laughs> She's like, um, holy shit. She loves the freedom because she felt very imprisoned by being in an area where there was so much crime and there was so much kind of danger. Um, everything she did, she had to check with us like six times. And I'd be like, okay, yes, you can go to the neighbor's house, but I have to walk you yeah. 30 yards, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know? In Venice, can I, here, how old is here, she? Here, she's just it, gone in the farm. Like, and I have no idea, like a, like a, like a dog. She'll just come back when she feels like it. You know? How old is she? Nine. And she has adventures and she has little, she'll set up tents in the- That's a in childhood the, bubble. And no, it's great. I, that that, that part is really meaningful to me. Like she's, she, she lives like freaking Tom Sawyer, you know? And she's going, going to school out here mm -hmm. too? Yeah. Going to school? Yeah. And she, she's making friends. She is, and it's and it's like that's another thing. It sounds so corny, you know, like a full on city slicker like myself to move to somewhere with a little bit more space and land, and then to be like the people here are just so great. But the people here and the They're kids, the kids as well. It's a different thing. There's just so much. Man, you, I'm another, jealous. I know that we got to get out of here. But that's why I think to, to this, like, if you're going to move to Austin, you do what he's doing. You don't I move know, here I know, I and know. move to a gated community. Right. And it's just LA, but in Austin. Yep. If you're going to do it, do it, man. You're thinking about, are you going you, you to be a farm boy? Uh, my kids growing up with animals? Yeah, I don't know if I'm the guy for that job, but they I'll try. The, all I'll the try. All the animals are going to start, gonna but I'll try my best. There's no, listen, this is one thing I will tell you because I know you, okay? There's no fucking off white. There's yeah. no like all of your streetwear, all, all of done. your high fashion. It's gotta go. It's gotta out go. the door. You can save it in the back of yeah. your closet. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. listen, there it, get some shit boots. Get some boots. and mud and just you can't even understand how you get that dirty. Uh, and you know, I want like, that. Yeah. I'll trade that life. I'll yeah, trade all that shit. Well, you're for that. you're in you, out here in Texas. You you ain't living in. It's not plush grass and greenery. It's a lot of yeah. Lot that's of the desert. I'm out. That the one thing uh, you know point. in hill country, it's yeah. a little bit more. You get you get greenery, you know, yeah. especially in parts of the year. But that's a thing. Like my wife, said, she's from Seattle area, so she loves the, the outdoors, wet, the wet. but she likes green the wet. and uh, the some, conifers, the conifer trees, especially in the summer. This part of Texas becomes West Texas. It's just yellow, burnt stuff yeah. you know what I'm saying? the parks yeah. and stuff still maintain around here which is nice yeah you can go but get, you, you get but our farm our farm is like yeah. orange and yellow right now that's right you know? and then right. took it, you guys come into town a bunch like yeah date you know, night like yeah exactly like we'll go to the, the mothership or go to see you know bands play and you know it's like it's like if you if if staple center was downtown uh, austin right yeah. let's say downtown LA. we live in like you know encino you know, That's so it's bad. like, yeah, we were, it's, it's, it's like 35 minutes. Here's another thing is funny because the population's increased greatly around here, but you know, people will say things to me and they'll be, I was, I took an Uber the other day cause I took my wife's car to get serviced and the gentleman was so nice. He's like, well, I just got to tell you, man, this, this traffic, this, this will kill you cause it gets bad around here. And I was like, <laughs> That's adorable. Excuse me, sir. <laughs> That's adorable. You, you understand Venice to, to Malibu's about nine miles and that's two and a half hours yes. of your life yeah, of yeah. soul crushing yeah stop and go exhausting uh, oh yeah. fuck adorable yeah. that they think it's a lot of traffic i love when it's nice it's nice because like even a lot of traffic is it, it's not soul crushing no you know? no it's it's like shut up shut up what's up fam hopefully you guys are enjoying this episode of the fight and the kid we are in austin texas so we're using the drinking bros podcast studio hope you guys are enjoying it we'll be back to regular business next week cal is in dallas all week with crowder alex jones doing the damn thing so hope you guys are enjoying the episodes live from austin but don't get it twisted just because we did in austin we still came with the macadamias baby the house of macadamias you know how, how they do daddy they got the chocolate dip the raspberry white chocolate flavored is my uh vibe Callan's always doing the vanilla or the chocolate dip. They are the best macadamia nuts on planet Earth. And it's not just for the rich. It's not just for Elon and Jeff Bezos anymore. It used to be, but thanks to House of Macadamias, they're using local farmers, over 90 farmers that they use for these macadamia nuts. They recently dropped the new House of Macadamia milk right here. 
This 100% macadamia nut milk right here. Delicious house of macadamias, macadamia that goes right into your coffee. All you do is put this little this little packet right here. You put this in uh, some water, eight ounces of water, put that in your coffee. Tell me you're going to find better tasting coffee than this house of macadamia. It's 100% macadamia. goes directly into your dark, dark roast coffee. It's the best in the biz. And you get house of macadamias, you want to try it? Cool. Let me hook you up. They're going to give you guys, and they never do discounts. If you go to houseofmacadamias.com slash T-F-A-K, you get 20% off this macadamia, 100% macadamia in your coffee, the chocolate dip nuts. You get the bars, all right? You get 20% off all that, but also they're giving away a box of the variety pack macadamia bars. You get the 45% macadamia snack bars, one of each flavor. Then you can pick, then you save 20% off. They're giving you that for free when you go to houseofmacadamias.com slash T-F-A-K. That's 20% off your entire order with code T-F-A-K. Macadamias, House of Macadamias, you're welcome. I feel, I feel like the traffic in LA has gotten better, though. We're not in the top uh, five for worse traffic. Because people are people working more, from more home. More people working, working from, home. from home. A lot of people left. Yeah. And it's I not as bad, but I think that's just maybe making an excuse. Well, I, be, I, know, I, I think with uh, some of the advents of technology, like 3D printing, where you're going to be able to make everything that you want right there in your hometown. There's all these new things, even like drone technology that yeah. gets goods to you. So trucks and all these things aren't on the road as much. I don't like that. And let me tell you why. Like because like certainly the... It, your quality of life in some regard will improve because there's less traffic or there's, and there's more ease to, to create. But like, for instance, I was thinking the other day, my daughter heard a song. Uh, I, I don't know if it was like in the Barbie movie or something. We were watching something and she heard a song that she liked. And I, in five minutes went to some streaming site, found it, played it for her. Then if she wanted it, we could go to iTunes, buy it and yeah. not move from the fucking couch. Not move. And I thought about one time when I was in like seventh grade, <clears throat> I was watching Beavis and Butthead with my friend Jason. Hell yeah. And they played a white zombie video and I'd never heard white. And I was like, that's the coolest shit I've ever heard in my life. We had to get on bikes and go somewhere. We went to Sam Goody mm -hmm. in South Pasadena and then had to talk to humans to find about it. where it might be. Yeah. So we found it, saw artwork, paid money, you know, interacted, took it home and then both conferred about how good the it music more. was. It you know what I'm saying? You appreciate it more. Experience. And I think a lot of that gets taken away. It's it's very... It was, it was, it was the same thing with my son. He Because those Nintendo Switches now, they're so good. The graphics are so good. But the, you don't you know you don't go into like a GameStop or so, like a Best Buy to buy yeah. games anymore. It's connected to the internet. So, he, hey, Dad, I want this game. Cool. Click, buy, downloads the game in 10 minutes. Well, what about hologram playing, technology? And I, and I was telling them... <laughs> Yeah, what the no, fuck? Holograms are no, holograms. Like, talk about parenting. When I can have no, you right no, hold here. On, but hold on. Let me finish the story, B, yeah. before we talk about holograms. Uh, but so he wanted that game. He downloads it. And I was saying, I'm like, oh, you're missing out, bud. Like me and my boys used to want a game. Again, we'd get on our bikes. We'd get our money together. Yeah. Ride our bikes down there. We'd have the physical, like the copy, all the artwork. Yeah. You'd be so excited to get home. I'm like, oh, you. to him, he's just like, yeah, get it. And it doesn't mean as much. It does. It doesn't. It, it, they don't, he doesn't appreciate right, it. Right, but unfortunately, we're not going to get. It's only going to get worse. What yeah. I meant by hologram technology is we're going to get to a point where you're going to look like you're sitting there. You're you. Yeah. So Mike will be able to. That's be, not good. You know, I, well, that's like Howie Mandel. At the beginning of the technology is investing in it. You stand in a thing. And it's I, it, it's it's so crazy. You're right there. It's like, like Star Trek, yeah. Yeah, it's like with yeah. Ellen DeGeneres where she was in this thing and she looked like she was there and she was talking and people came into the store. Have you seen that? Ryan, I want I want you to know. Yeah. When that technology is accessible to the general public, yes. I'm gonna fuck your ass. What? Like that's the first thing. <laughs> what, yeah. are you, what are you saying? The digital. I'm ass. fucking your hologram. No, no, you, you can't your fuck digital my hologram, ass. butt, dude. That. Listen to me. Uh, what? Earth. Yeah. As soon as we have access to that First technology, <laughs> Brian Callen is getting duked up, backdoor, no lube. Don't and feel, Shab's going to be right next to me. I don't feel yeah. comfortable yeah. with yeah. that. Yeah. Tickle, yeah. tickle his balls. Yeah. No, 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 I don't feel comfortable with that. Yeah. Yeah. We're a couple of straight guys, man. Sort of. I'm a, I'm a, but We're I'm virtually not, I'm gay. Not that's, virtually. You're virtually yeah. gay. That's but that's actually fine. Yeah. <laughs> Bring up the. Uh, did you see the Ellen DeGeneres thing? Yeah, we were on. Yeah. I was on yeah. Howie Mandel. Well, remember how he brought up on our show? Right. I, I, I don't subscribe to it. I guess if you want to do that, you can do that. I'm not going to do gonna it. Happen, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Yeah, well, and, and, and for sure, it's going to happen. Well, let me ask you. But a it's question. just like Zoom. Yeah. Would you rather have my care on Zoom or in person? I think it's a little different. 
It's so, not, so though, Mike because the there, energy, the human connection. It is. He's I, right. know, I agree He's with absolutely you. right. I agree with you. I just think it's going to be unavoidable. And by the time that comes out, you'll be dead, right? But, but, but here's what's going to happen. Mike's going to go, I can get in the car and drive. I could just be right here. It's like, and what happens is you go, dude, I got to do this thing. But I can do it. I can do it virtually. Yeah, it's fine. And people who are watching it are going to see the hologram, and they're just not going to – it's not going to be that big a deal. You can do it on Zoom, though, now. Not as good. I think – well, listen, it might not be that big a deal to the people viewing, yeah. but trust me, to the people creating it's a bad product. It's, it's a bad Because there's 100%. even – even from, like – Think of like really meaningful moments, like really powerful emotional moments, like either in, the, me. in the, right in the t uh, in a good way or in a, in, a, in a difficult way to do. Okay, here's a good example. Think about you two being together with Joe Rogan sitting across. I know it was a fighter in the kid episode, even though it was in Rogan's studio, and Joe's sitting there and he's trying to convince Brendan to quit fighting. Mm -hmm. Okay, was, yeah. imagine if Joe's not in the room. <laughs> yeah. It's not the same. Brendan was probably like flooded yes. with all these emotions and every because he's looking at his friend in the eyes and, and Joe his can other feel that. really good friend is sitting right next yeah. to him. You're right. You can't replicate that. You can't. You're, you're you can't. It's going right. to be a worse product. It's so true, man. You just can't. And then to imagine stand-up. Like even how he's like, you could do stand-up. You could be in, you could be in no. Dubai doing stand-up. like, yeah, but I don't have that personal, I can't feel the energy of you the room. can't touch me. I was, so at, suck. I was at Coachella for, and now, granted, that was 10 years ago, whatever, so technology's probably gotten so much better. But I was at the Coachella where they brought out Tupac hologram. Yeah. It wasn't that dumb. But <laughs> like, like, yeah, but this, this shit, like, like, oh, but this new shit, watch, watch this uh, Ellen thing. Just bring this up for a second. Watch this. It's really wild. This is, this, she's standing in a box and it looks f crazy real. That's God, she's standing there. Now, now, now they're all here and they're like, what? Now they don't think she can see her. They, she starts talking and then she says, you're wearing a, you're on a yellow top watch. She goes, what am I wearing? See? Uh, oh my yeah. God. So she's looking at them. I mean, it's really she's wild. She's clearly a hologram, but yeah. But it's, but did you see it? I went to a studio. Did you see how he did it? I was like, yeah, that looks it. as real as it gets. Like it's a 3d thing. Well, the deep fakes are getting to the point where I'm really concerned. And, uh, I, I think it's fun. Uh, the other day, I, they got me. I was watching, just like, scrolling through YouTube, and I saw um, headline is like, Rogan finally opens up about the problem with the UFC, right? And I'm, wa I'm like 45 seconds into this video, like, oh, I can't believe he's saying that. Like, how can you pay this much for ESPN Plus and not even get the money? You know what I'm saying? And then have to pay more for a pay-per-view? And I'm like, this is... This is crazy that he's just going to – and it, it's, it's all fake. fake. It's all fake. It's, it's, the, know, biggest like, word, it's the biggest word to me, man. Yeah. But that's also the, the, the strike with the actors too, right? Yeah. Like the, the digital yes. and all that stuff. And Which they, is fair. If, I'm a, if I was an actor, I, I could see. But to me – and I, I can't speak to how hard it must be to be a performer and then think about someone replacing you that's not real. Nightmare. But – much like we were talking about the, the broadcasting aspect of you, of you sitting next to – you can't – there's no AI good enough to, to be Tarantino. You know what I'm saying? No, like, no, I think, it will, not, I think yeah. you will start to appreciate the standards of, things, of people who do something really well. I agree. There's, there's no – you can get an AI to make a, a Taylor Swift song, okay? And I'm, I'm not shitting on Taylor Swift. I love pop. People who can write good pop songs, it's mean. so great. But but you can get the – there's no – you can't replicate no. the talking heads no. or no. – you know, people who are going to – or Vivaldi. It's, well, I think the, gonna, owl, the cream's going to rise to the top yeah, and it's going to well, separate no, that, everybody from that. Yes. But one of the things one of the things is that they, they want, I guess, access to your likeness, right? So they yeah. want to be able to take your likeness. And not pay you. And, yeah. That's what that's, that's, that's where it's fucked up. They can't even do that with video games. How are they going to say they can do that with virtual shows? Yeah, that's, that's ridiculous. Yeah, That's not good. Uh, it's, yeah. you know, the whole thing is very scary because that's a concern. But my wife's an actor, right? It's, it's a concern and I sympathize. But above all that, like we should look at the big picture is that if technology gets good enough where you can have Joe Biden real believably saying, well, Vladimir Putin's a dictator and we're going to blow him up. And it's what we have to do from the, the, and the White House it. press, you know, press yeah. room. It's like. Oh, what, where are we going with you? Yeah. Like they get they get, get really bad. Well, China's clearly a a a, a a a a blight to society, and we need to erase well, that. Last yeah. night with with Alex and Eddie and Joe, part of the <coughs> argument was that we just didn't know. Nobody knew where to look for really reliable truth. Yeah, like everybody had a different idea. If you say something and you make an argument, they go, "Well, that where'd you get that from?" 
Ah, that's not. And so the sources are the, the source that I'm citing is dismissed because we and don't know what's real. Agree. There's confirmation bias. So that's if I believe problem. that Biden's a lizard person, I can find a group that is going to send me information yes. that confirms that. And, and even me, even worse. Because yeah, confirmation bias. But confirmation bias has been happening since modern media's existed. Yeah, sure. But what, what, what concerns me more is that justifiably, if you're like really left leaning and you get some hard facts about something that contradicts what you believe in, you just go, "Well, I don't. That's fake." Correct. And if you're super right wing, I've I've seen it happen before. And you get some facts about crime statistics that go against what you you're like, "Well, yeah, but that's who who gave you that? Uh, it came from CNN, exactly." Yep. Totally. There you go. Everything becomes questionable. Although, you know what I did? Mm -hmm. Remember, I, I cited that thing I'd heard this guy talking about how the five cities, if you take all the five cities of, uh, with gun violence in the United States, if you take the certain five cities out of the equation, we're not California, we're like, Chicago, we're like number Philly, 189. Yeah. It's not true. It's not true? It's a bullshit statistic. And it's just, it doesn't. It's not true. Well, here's and what I, is and true. And I cited it. Here's what is true. And, and this, is, this yeah, I would love, you know, if it's. I actually hope it's not true, but I, I've, I've done a considerable amount of looking into it. You see gun statistics in America compared to other civil – what we look at as like advanced yeah, countries. It's insane. It's insane. It's insane, yeah. But then look how many of them are self-inflicted. Uh, that's right. They and don't. You have to bring that into account. And I'm not that's like right. – I'm a gun owner. I'm a, a big believer in freedom to own guns and yep. Second Amendment. But that's I'm it. not someone who's like uh, an ideologue about it. But I will say, more concerning to me than dunking on someone who wants to present me with gun statistics is like, yeah, but wait, let, why are we arguing? There's that many people fucking eating guns in this country. Well, that's a depression, what, that, mental and, illness. And, and that's that's a, a, to me, that's not an issue of the guns. That's the issue of the person. Yeah. And, and the same thing. Also, try to shit my hometown. You right? guys, okay, listen, yeah. not only, I, I, you're a gun owner, aren't you? Yes. you both of you are. Yeah, big yeah, time. I'm a okay. Second Amendment guy. Big time. But, but I will say this. If you take out suicide and gang violence, if you take out those Two those things. two big ones. Those are very big. That's the another thing that I think is like secretly kind of even more racist than even people want to give it credit for. In in the sense that whenever there's a mass shooting, well, like like one that catches the news, right? Yeah, it's always a white guy. Well, and it, 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 it <laughs> usually will be, but but and and then there's this debate. The, it heats up, and every the View to yeah. you know Rachel Maddow, everyone's talking about this in, and how it's the guns or it's mental health. And I was like, in the time that we've been talking about this, four black guys are dead in Oakland or Baltimore. Every day. And, and I was like, w you really now want to talk about the, the mass amount of gun violence because there was this publicized shooting at a concert or school or something, or, which is a travesty. But, but let's really look at the gun problem South is, Side Chicago. is people of color in certain cities shooting each other. Yeah, Dan. Dan Holloway, you you probably know a lot about this. I feel I, like I do. Yeah. Can you give us some insight on, on that? Because every time I talk, when I talk about guns, I'll get a dude like you, who will educate the shit out of me. Because what happens is, you and I'll have these things. I'll be like, well, gun control, reasonable gun control. We should have background checks. And then I'll get people who really understand the debate, hmm. and they're on the they're on the Second Amendment side, and I get schooled. So but, I don't. But, wanna... but it's saying having background checks, not. Pro yeah, give us, give us some. I'll, let, I'll go that. through these in the order that you brought them up. So the first point is that um, the vast majority of gun homicides are suicide, right? That's correct. It's like sixty-five percent. Um, Jesus, it's like uh, seriously, I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir, but right? think, put that into consideration. Sure, There's yeah. that many fucking people killing themselves yeah. with a gun, yeah. and that would be—that's a larger issue of depression, mental, mental health. health. Lost a bre breakdown down family, Lock all down. that stuff. Yeah. Fatherlessness. And I mean this with with the utmost respect. But you know how many, what percentage of those of that sixty five percent is fucking veterans? A lot. It's it fucking brings a tear to your well, eye. If you veteran. really look, it's, at yeah, it's quite a few, and it's it's also uh, mostly well, it's almost entirely men. It's right, all really as well. So huh. very few women shoot themselves. To the other point about um, the racism as aspect, I think you're. I, I've said that for years, right? So we we spend most of our political capital talking about. So-called assault rifles, which is not even a real thing, but right. let's say it is, right? We talk about rifles that I think they account for less than 2% of all gun homicides. Like, hammers kill more people than rifles in this really? country, yes. Than AR-15s, etc. But And I think about 69% of gun homicides that are not suicide are committed by handguns in inner cities, right? So we have problems. It's... There's, there's certainly a problem there. Here's, here's the thing, the last thing you said about background checks. I think that everybody 
who can hear the sound of my voice right now probably knows somebody that should not own a fucking gun, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah we, all, we all know at least one guy. <laughs> yeah. But who, 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 one. <laughs> but who are we going to put I'm in liability. charge of, you know, deciding who that is? The state? The government? Have well, they, we, have do, they, we do that with cars. That power before, you we know do that mean? with cars, though. That's do what I get. I'm, I'm, I'm with do them, though. That's background checks. Do, anyway. do you want to give the government that control? Yeah, fuck well, that. We and do by have the way, state driving has a car it. is not a constitutionally protected right either. Right. So oh, that's, that's, that's yeah, you, you, what, yeah, who's going to dictate whether you're healthy or not for a gun? That's a huge... But, 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 but here, could, could you say, hey, if you're on antidepressants, you're not allowed to have a gun. If, you, if you're on a certain medications, it does cause a red flag where you're going to have to take... You can't just go buy AR-15. Uh, well, who I decides you know, I that? You know, I, that's a, it's who decides it is the question. Right? Yeah. How do you like, define I mean, That's a illness. tough one because yeah. do you know how many you know how many cops and veterans are on SSRIs to deal with yes. the life they live. So yes. that's what you, you can't say. I agree. That, yeah, you know well, you got to crack a few eggs make an omelet. No, I yeah. agree with you that, that, that it, it, when you how you define not only mental illness but who decides whether or not you're actually a danger to society or a danger to yourself. That's the biggest issue. But we do know that. And do we, you want to give them? Because you know, if you give the government an inch, they take a mile. Well, so then all of a sudden, they, they get in and. I, and I would say this: we do have a spree shooter problem. There are yeah. that's an issue that all of us agree on. What you do about it is a lot. Right now, we don't really have a solution. I, I, but hold on, B. When you, you say don't. you have a spree shooter problem, you know you're more likely to die in your Uber to the airport than you are to die by a spree shooter. That is true. So where do you want to put your right. energy? Here, here's okay. Here's another aspect that we have to look at, though. I I am, I will say outright. I grew up like completely sheltered, very uh, nice, affluent uh, neighborhood in in Los Angeles, in the east side of Los Angeles. Both parents in the household, loving environment. I'm not trying to present myself as some like gangster tough guy. But you did, but you did because, math. But, but you because did of math. because of drugs, you did math. No, they, they, uh, you're exactly right. Because of drugs, uh, because of meth, I hung out with a lot of neo Nazis in fucking the high desert, and a, and tons of time with like legit cholos. Like legit gangsters, Crips. I would go buy crack in in uh, North in like Altadena. Hell yeah! These guys were legit gangsters. Okay, and every one of them had guns. Every one of them had illegally obtained guns. None of them, yeah, had to go with any type of background check. And I would love to see the statistics of this like inner city violence that makes up a lot of this uh, these shootings. They're probably like these, the, the old-fashioned uh, uh, term was like Saturday Night Specials, right? These like low-grade handguns that are stolen or yeah. illegally obtained. It's not like, like you can, of course, who doesn't want to invest time and effort into looking who's legally obtaining guns? That's a, that's a reasonable thing to say. But the majority of gun violence isn't probably committed by these people who are going to go get a background Correct. check yeah. in the first place. And, and that's know? the problem. Like, yeah. I don't think there's a, there's clearly not a simple answer or a solution. Uh -huh. There's also more guns than there are people in the United States. So I don't think it's a problem they can I, solve. I agree. I agree. What do you use to shoot coyotes? What, 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 are, you, what are you working with? Uh, for the coyotes? Yeah. I Because I only have, I'm not like, <laughs> uh, 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 I don't have a wealth of guns. I have uh, two, uh, a thirty out six, a three oh eight that I've used for hunting, okay. and I Bold realized action, very quickly just... like I shouldn't be shooting coyotes with that. Yeah, because a, big, a friend a of guy. mine who lit, had, was born and raised in in kind of like a farm environment, he's like get either a high powered uh, air rifle or a twenty two, and I got I have a twenty two Ruger now that and, and shoot him in the butt, and they'll go back and tell their friend. Really? Oh, like like uh, this area maybe stay away. Oh, I and, mean, that's mean. Oh, air and it sounds better. it sounds crazy, but it kind of worked. But then, like I said, then I got the uh, the uh, the Great Pyrenees, and I just don't deal with it. I yeah. don't. I, it's not an issue. That's great. I know. I'm not. <laughs> I hope, great. Yeah. I like that. And the donkeys too. The donkeys apparently do great. I heard donkeys, donkeys are, are gangster, bad right? Aren't they gangster? It's not that they're super gangster. It's that something evolutionarily, like visually. Smaller mammal predators will see them and they'll be like, "Ah, it's not worth it." Because they, they, they put up a back. fight. They, I get, but I can't see. I these donkeys. Now, granted, if they catch you with a back kick, you they yeah, they will fuck you they'll up. Bite you, but too. they're not like vicious animals. Like I can't. I don't understand how this has become a thing. Have you seen that me. donkey that beat up that dude who and kept whooping his ass? And the donkey's like, "All right, t enough's enough," and beats oh, the brakes. If off you this catch dude. one. They're back kick. Yeah, it's devastating. But I just don't see them as like now, particularly now are, aggressive. Are they attached to you? Yeah, they, uh, the donkeys. I always, <laughs> you always say like you don't want to say who's your favorite kid. But to me, 
I, I will walk around on the farm and they're like, oh, you guys are the best. Come on. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're great. Like the sheep and the, and the, and the goats Dumb are shit. amazing. Goats are smart. But, but they want it. They live their life. The, the, yeah. the donkeys genuinely, maybe I'm making this up. They just want the food. They want me to feed them. But they genuinely seem like they want to hang out with me, you know? Yeah. So. Cutie. God, and com- comedy top tier animal. Are they? A fucking donkey? Yeah. yeah. Just like, look, How big are donkey. they? Yeah, they How do look funny. They? We have the mini ones, so they're like this tall. Do they you know, wake, the do, do roosters wake you up? Yeah. You can't, you, they do? Yeah. What That's time? living, brother. Uh, yeah, it's, not, it's not crazy, like 6.30. Because so. uh, they wake up when the sun comes up, right? It seems like <laughs> it, it. I also think they, I think like a lot of animals, they'll wake up and then when they're, they're, they're like, they want either food or attention, that's when they... Is that why they start cr- roostering? Crushing? I don't know, because I, a lot of it, I think, is protective or communication because throughout the day, the roosters will crow. And and the, also the roosters... Now, the roosters are badasses, they don't some of them. Around. Because if you go to... Like, I'll go to deal with the hens or even feed them. The roosters will fly up and kick me and shit. Like, they are protective. They, you know, there's a... Dude, Dan has a friend who has raccoons. You can buy raccoons, right? Fuckers. I want a raccoon. You get, they they sleep with this guy. Too. It's a problem. They have they're cool like, hands. They're like little cat dog monkeys with hands. Yeah, yeah they're, they're they have like human smart. hands. Yeah. And they have the robber's mask on at all. And, yeah, and you they, probably dealt with it even in urban environments. Like raccoons are not dumb, and they no. have razors. Kill my fucking, yeah. kill my koi and my fucking turtles. Seriously? Yeah. Yes, bro. Ooh, there's a pond. They're assholes. That's brutal. Yeah, the I don't like it. Brutal. They chewed my cr- turtles. Um, what's her name? Thelma. They chewed her head. Off and her little feet off. Oh my Fuck god! Yeah, I just left her there. That's my kids were like, "Where is the turtle Thelma?" I was like, "Ah, she hibernating for the rest of her life." You know, fucking bad liar. You have possums too out here. I think so. I like a nice possum, man. You know what I've? I seen? almost ran over an armadillo. Me and my boy. I yes, love armadillos. We almost ran it over, but They're I the stopped. Tanks the tanks of the wild Fucking just took his time crossing the road. You know what I've sick. seen, which is crazy, because. I really have zero problem shooting coyotes. They are a horrible animal. Coyotes are horrible animals, and they're kind of bitches. Um, but I've seen a couple foxes, and I'm like, I'm really happy I haven't had to yet because you are beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> like, you are a beautiful. Because they'll fuck up your chicken. The, oh, Rogan foxes, had that problem in foxes California. Are tough. Yeah. They all. I mean, that's the old, the old figure of speech, the fox in the hen house. You know, yeah. like, uh-huh. foxes are no. Yeah, they're no. no they'll, they'll, they'll fuck up your whole hen house. Yeah. I can't have that. Can't have snakes. Fuck off all these is there, guys. Is there anything you miss about L.A.? Did you? When I miss it. I'm like, not one of these guys that's like moved moving to the country month? and like shitting on. Yeah. I miss L.A. A, a ton. I miss. What do you miss? Uh, I mean, right off the bat, I miss Dodgers Lakers because my family been season ticket holders for both since before I was born. Yeah. Oh. So it was a big. Not only was it like I'm a fan. It was a part of my childhood. You know, Dodger, Dodger Stadium was my summer house. You know, yeah. that was my summer house. Is that right? Yeah. I, I, my, my dad and I would go to. 50 something Dodger games a year wow. and and probably That's like every home game and Holy probably shit. like 20 Laker games on on top and then every playoff game that was a home game you know Jesus yeah, yeah. so you, you so you missed the sports aspect. I missed sport. I mean you know when what I first the first month there we were kind of like ah, I fucked up no no because the first month was so much there was so much going on that I almost didn't have time you to have think time about to it think, you're yeah. just like constantly grinding you know even before the animals were there it was like getting like getting the fencing around the, all the acreage to make sure there was no holes for the coyotes. Like there, there's just a million things. What about the to... friend aspect? Like you don't have as many friends out here. You're an LA kid. Dr. Yeah. Drew's in Pasadena. Not it's far a, from you. I, I think it's been a lot, it's been a lot easier for me than it has my wife. Uh, and I, and I know I hate to go like the gender slant thing, but I think it's just been easier to make friends. You believe in gender? Do, do I believe it exists? Yes, I do. Sorry, I do. Sorry. You believe in uh, science? Um, sorry, sorry. But, but, you know, like my wife, and maybe it's just lifestyle, but, you know, I go and train at, at, at the academy, you know, at Sheepdog at, you know, Gracie Maida. And oh, you like, do? There's You're a training with Tim and those guys? I do, yeah. You and make um, some friends, though. And you know, I make friends, and I meet people, and I make, and then you, uh, one of my friends went to see you the other night. Okay. Yeah, you know, I was supposed to go to Ke- Kevin, yeah. And um, you yeah, I meet people. I go to the gym and lift weights and I, I meet people and like I, I built a, a network of friends pretty easily. It's a completely different network of friends. Like my friends back home growing up, they, they were my buddies since kindergarten. Almost exclusively, my friends out here are like like real life John Wicks, you know? Yeah. And it yeah. does. Yeah, at first, yeah. It, it makes me feel really inadequate. Like it really does. And I, I'm, I'm not trying to say you got that some just. Tough to, fuckers who's got. Like a freezer full of game meat and all the guns. Yeah, and, and it's not even just and like a bunch of combat medals. And, and just, what they say they do. It, exactly. And it, you different. know, honestly, and like you just get a sense. And I had this really badly when I was probably like 25. Um, I had just been in radio and started to actually have a life for myself for being in radio. And I was on the Kevin and Bean Morning Show. And it was a couple years into the second Iraq invasion. 
after 9-11. And I was, couldn't sleep one night. And I thought, I was like, my life's pretty meaningless. Like, mm. I make fart jokes and I get sound, collect sound effects for other dudes to make silly jokes. Mm. And I was like, I'm going to enlist. I'm still young enough, like, I could do this. And I could mean something. to the. And my ex-wife was like, I will fucking leave you. Yeah. You're out of your mind. And she died. But, and so I had this crisis of like, well, what, when, when I, when I die, hopefully in 50 years, uh, what will my life genuinely have meant? And I always have this feeling, especially being around those gentlemen, it's like, well, you're, you really fucking mean something like your life means something. And, yeah. and I, and I, so I, I, ha, I, cr I feel very, um, handicapped by that a lot of times, but then I work through it because I tell, I was like, well, if, if I just really commit to being like a great dad, my life means something, Hell yeah. you know, I really commit to being a great husband, it's an important job. my life means something, you know? So that, I, I, but I do, I do feel that, you know, when you're around those people, Fuck, dude, they're I, talking I, about like casually talking about like, oh, well, the third time I was in Afghanistan yeah, and you're like, whoa, it's crazy. Man. Yeah. But there's it's, been more benefits than. Yeah, I, I do. I'm, uh, you know what I miss about LA? Like seriously. And, uh, because there's amazing Mexican food out here. Uh, I miss Jewish deli food. It's not a, not a huge Jewish stronghold in yeah. Central yeah. Texas, yeah, yeah. You know? yes. but I, I, I do miss like a really good. You do, know, do you miss like Jewish. the energy of LA, like the hustle? Because there's a hustle mentality. Out I there. miss the old energy of LA. Hmm. I miss the old the non woke energy, and, and I, I'm not even going with the like wokeness. How old are you now? Uh, 44. Yeah, I miss when I was like late in my teens, early 20s, where like a 19 year old, 20 year old kid has this lofty Hollywood idea of like cultures meshing and being this like new fangled. There was a time and a place uh, through the mid nineties to the early two thousands where like cholo culture, graffiti art, surf, skate punk, biker culture was all, you know, hip hop, punk Blending rock together. was just this lovely, beautiful goulash. And it yeah. was, vi you could feel it yeah. and it was fucking awesome. And I miss that. And I, I, I it, you know, so being here doesn't really make me miss out on it because I don't think it's that way anymore. Either. Right. No, there, no, yeah. not at all. Man, I'm, I'm jealous. Of Mike's life? I want to wear a cowboy hat and buy some boots and get out there in the mud. Yeah. Get out there in the mud. Get my hands dirty. I, I, yeah, get some I, calluses on my hands. I'm going to do it. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll make the move out here eventually. You're going to be working just, on my I just, farm. I just have more shit to do in yeah. L.A. I, I, where I can't yeah. get done out here. Yeah. And also, like... If I was a single man or or my wife and I didn't have children, it's it's a different thing. I mean, you're you're at a different point in your life, right? So I would say you fucking do it. But it'd be it's it's a thing to uproot your children who have a That's friend network. But I got and, kids. and just be like, We're I got out. I got a twelve year old and a fifteen year old, so oh, I got yeah. I'm, I'm there for a while. twelve and fifteen is actually peak age of like, do you really want to do that? To I know, especially you know? twelve. Yeah. Like my son's yeah. seven, the other one's three. We got another one on the way. You got time. I, as long as as long as I do it before he's nine. I You're got keeping two years it real to get it with the Mexican wife. Just pounding, you know. This is the baby. last one though. She's yeah. a hater. This is the last one. I want like five, but she's a hater, man. Okay. How are you Mexican? She's a hater. Yeah. No, I, I always get shit because my sister, uh, she was keeping it real. She has like, you know, a million kids. And Hell yeah. Really? I, I cut it off at one. Who is know? Mexican in your family? Your my mom? mom? Yeah. Your dad was yeah. what? White? My dad's Irish. How I'm Mexican Irish. is your mom? Like Taco Bell Mexican or like? No, no, my mom's. Like illegally came here. My mom's Coyote Mexican. legit, born and raised East Los, Spoil Heights. Yeah, yeah she's pretty Mexican. Not, not only Mexican, but like Chicano, LA. Yeah. Mexican. Hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, for sure. Has a and it's so weird because like, my dad's from rural Oregon. Probably, you, you, know, you feel more white though. I, you know, I was my wife and I were having this conversation. It was, um, it was very straight. We were having the conversation about like um, non-binary, about yeah. like you know, I I, th I was saying like I think a lot of people feel like not fully manly at some points and not fully feminine at some points. Both men, you know. Really? And I was, and I was talking. I think is that an LA thing? You liberal, bro? No, I. I'm hey, not, man, I'm, listen, get out of here. I'm a man. You American? Bro? I'm a man. Hey. American? I'm a man. But but I do think like look, I don't struggle with that you, at all. Check you, you don't ever feel. I don't struggle with that at all. You don't ever try feel that. Like, well, I, I, I have a joke about it. Like, uh, what does it mean to feel like a man? For me, it's like I know how you have to be as a man. You got to make it. You got to you got to wake up every day. This is how a man is. I got all the answers, and yeah. today's a good day to die. Yeah. But the truth is, I don't have any answers, and I'm always fucking afraid. But I'm not going to tell anybody. Well, no. I feel like well, here's what I will say. No, here's no. what I will say about <laughs> it. Here's yeah. a, what when I feel particularly masculine, 
Uh, I will be encountered with negative emotions or feelings of sorrow or depression or worry about something, and I and I will genuinely make that decision. I was like, yeah, well, too fucking bad. I'm going. <laughs> but, is, I go, but is that masculine or is that just human? I, I That's feel like human. I think I think it, 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 in the sense that my wife, who is by no means like a soft person, would like to talk about those feelings. Yes, you know? like I'll, I'll say like this. I will say this about, about men. Hmm? I would say if I'm, I'm talking broad spectrum. Hmm? Women um, benefit a great deal from talking and and I, so let's just say men and women probably have different needs emotionally. And let me yeah. explain. It, men like to feel significant. They like to feel important. They like to feel powerful. They want to feel admired. And they'll go through hell to get to a point where they have a status that affords them that mm -hmm. when they walk into a room. They'll become Navy SEALs. They'll freeze. They'll starve. They'll they don't need your psychology. Succeed in business. Need, whatever. That, yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. They don't need to be talking about their feelings. Fuck your feelings, bro. I want, I want to accomplish. Give me the gold medal. And give me, give, me that, give me that trident. Give me that fucking you know, billion dollars. And then we'll talk about my feelings later on. Yeah. Women, connection for women, connection is way more important typically with their family, with their spouse, with their is way more important than feeling significant. Yeah. It's why when a man walks in and he's got a gun, or a man walks in and he can do physical damage, or a man walks in and he's got a huge company, we notice men delineate authority real quick and we just go, <clears throat> it's like, I want to be kind of like that's that. That's the alpha. It's true. Yeah. It's, I mean, and women and here's, aren't that here's way thing too. Much. Like, uh, that's There's exactly overlap, why, but for the exactly part. why he was pointing out the overwhelming majority of of suicides is men. Yes, there because you go. classic. Example. And I and I don't think women genuinely, even if they're 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 sincere and wanting to understand how fucking devastating it can be to an adult male to be embarrassed or publicly shamed oh, or yeah. to fail in to a, in a, set, in a way that canceled. makes you feel uh, uh, impotent. Yeah, when um, they take away your right, your ability to earn a living, but, that, you're creating a dangerous. But B, man. when when you were all depressed and stressed out, and you text me. Oh, that and I was, was like, the, yeah, just get over it, get on the horse, this get was to the work. Best. Brian goes, you should be a therapist. Yeah, he goes, snap. Like, what do you out want of it? from me, man? I never am like that. But I was. He's having this long time. Some like, shit. I go, dude, bad. I don't know, man. I'm feeling, feeling sorry fucking. For yeah, I feel like fuck today. And I was talking about because some shit happened. Long and he tag, goes, like And he goes, uh, he goes, I get it, bro, but snap out of it. We got work to do. I started laughing so hard. You used to be a therapist. It was, I was so like, but good. also, what do you want? Like, and we had the most stressful time of all time on firing a kid with with all this financial stuff. That's yeah. I didn't tell Brian about it. I just got to work. He's like, man, you look like shit. I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm in the thick of it. And I was like, <laughs> that's we'll get helpful through it. too. Like, yeah, I'm in the thick of it. Thanks for pointing that out. I'm I wasn't in, yeah, aware. Thanks, dude. I'm in the thick of it. Let me get through it. We got through it. Oh, and it's so all good. Fun. Here's was, a, here's a, though to get back to your question about like, do you feel more Mexican? Or feel more white sometimes it's both uh sometimes especially in la where like the culture it's not just like there's a lot of mexicans there because there's a lot of everything in los angeles it, the culture of the city is built on like the framework of mexicans and not just mexican but like chicanos like mexican LA, and you feel i mexican feel it, influence. and i feel very connected there's a lot to of it. mexican uh influence out here though it's, yeah, it is it, absolutely but it's different it's a different thing it's because, a different vibe uh it, yeah like like tejano thing is is it, I, I like it but it's different and like i feel that and i feel very much in touch with it mm -hmm. sometimes in mexico you go and you see like you know like a like an aztec uh artifact or something i'm like fuck yeah you know i watched apocalypto not too long ago and oh. i was like i'm gonna go fuck shit i went outside that's a with, good like, shirtless movie. you know that's a good move yeah hell yeah but to that point that that's like in in la it's like this weird like america's the worst so i've become more like patriotic more more american where if i'm in texas people are like yeah yeah no shit like yeah yeah we love there's, america there's, but in I, la i'm like oh no i will storm the yeah, capital yeah la bitch. i like, am this close yeah, storming the capital yeah, la i'm, I'm like, like that, i need to get out I come of here, here and i'm softer i texas makes me a little more liberal because not I'm, me I i'm come, a contrarian not yeah well, you're a cuck but no but, <laughs> yeah, yeah no i out here I, yeah it's complete cuck. hey dude don't call me no you're a cuck in la or here right you're a cuck here or la last night alex jones uh, that, uh, uh, Rogan, Eddie Bravo, and and myself and Brendan, and I'm taking on Rogan, Alex Jones, and Eddie Bravo on all their. His argument was awful. He's talking I'm, about, he thinks I'm Epstein about actually was. Epstein. I'm suicide. talking about Epstein. I'm it's talking about insane. UFOs. I'm like, I don't buy any of this shit. And fucking, they're With coming Eddie at me so Alex hard. Too. They're coming at me so hard. And, and Brendan's not doing anything, but he's sitting at the end of the table. He's out of it. And he's going like this. 
you fucking cuck. Yeah. Tell that cuck. And he keeps pointing at me like that fucking cuck. And I'm like, That's probably more invested than Joe was. Because, oh, you know, he's, no, Joe was he's going known hard. you lo so long. Like, I've seen it on camera where he's just like, okay, Brian. Dude, yeah. he was it's like, it's like hard. Hearing, it's like hearing Bert is in great shape. Yeah. Like, okay, Bert. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, Brian I, and his like, my, my lats are just too big. Yeah, because I'm one of the few guys who will argue with Joe. Like, we yeah. get it. We get Joe and I will get into you, it. I would have loved to have seen, like, Eddie... And Alex oh, no, being Brian the two-headed serpent of uh, oh, no. Brian lost ten seven round. Oh, he <laughs> got <laughs> annihilated. Dude, I come hard though. And then I'll, I was the I'll, quarterman I'll thrown in the guns. white towel. Me and Rogan will go. We go. We Rogan and I used to go at it. We'd have arguments that were so crazy, like at the dinner table. Would be my girl, his girl, and then he and I'd be like, ah, because he, he was just like, I'm not giving an inch. He's not giving an inch. But we there's still some of that. But, but I, I think one of the reasons I'm drawn out here because I'm more politically lined out here, where yeah. I don't have to express it so much in LA. I feel like I have to. Defend it all the time, yeah. even if someone just asks a simple question. Here's the problem: then, you then, weren't you were never political until you got LA's pushed into a corner. Yeah, this you know, guy. my wife's the same way. My wife's like she used to be like, uh, you know, ignorance is bliss about a lot of uh, social issues and political issues, and now she, it made her because like you're constantly everything you do had to be scrutinized under that microscope, yeah. and it's like a, it's a little bit annoying. But um, you're you're exactly right because. When you're constantly, here's an, one thing also that's very important to point out: Los Angeles is fucking huge. Not only massive, not, not only real estate wise, people wise, yeah. and Hollywood is not Los Angeles. No, it's I would like to say novel. that over it's a tiny and over part of and Los over Angeles. again. So when you see Gwyneth Paltrow or whoever on the news and and or this kind of monolithic representation uh, of Los Angeles coming from the Hollywood machine, trust me. LA's mostly truck drivers and cops and and hard laborers and, yeah. and and it's just unfortunately there's so much power and money within the Hollywood system. It's, it's still, like it's, it's still like DC, a small part of the it's economy. like DC with politics. Hollywood's still a small part of the uh, Los Angeles. But, but they're the loudest. No, 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 but, but, but the influence, the, yes. the influence yeah, they're, they're, they're is the fucking loudest, remarkable. Of course, they're you by far that. the loudest. Like the, the yeah, only person, the only like here's a obviously like a a, a micro scale, but the only person who could get a, a better table at the Palm. Uh, at the old palm, the only person who could ever think to get in front of a like a studio exec or like a big Hollywood A lister was Jerry Buss. That yeah. was it. Yeah. If you weren't Jerry Buss, you had to be some mogul in Hollywood or a yes. big celebrity, and you get first bidding. Yes, you know. Yes. Yeah, it's a weird vibe. That's all. But true. they're so loud; they influence like the the whole LA kind of perspective. It's, it's like so. America's politics. like, oh, let LA's me ask you guys, like is, politics. Is, is, yeah, is it changing correct. though? Is Hollywood losing its power? I think. Well, I, my wife and I were just talking about it last night. Literally, like we were sc scrolling through like what to watch, and I got her into Shane Gillis. Right. Yep. And so great. she she wasn't familiar, and she's like, "Wow, this guy's really." I was like, "Yeah, he's 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 awesome." And I was telling her the story about like how Saturday Night Live happened, and then he got fired before he could even get out there. Yep. And then, but now he's become like one of the most commercially and he and even, artistically he's respected. bigger than everybody on Saturday Night Live, right? Now. And yeah. so I'm like, imagine what like the traditional old machine comedian actors are thinking. Like Aquafina must be at home going like, "What the fuck do I have to do?" If this guy got booted from Saturday Night Live, That's and right. you know what I'm saying, and not to pick on it's Aquafina, I'm just thinking though. of someone who's who is like, Aquafina. I'm she's the Asian lady who she's she's good. I, I I just she was the first one that came to my mind of like a Hollywood comic voice. You Correct. know what I'm saying? Like yeah. she's all over. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know who she is. Aquafina. Uh, but that's a good thing, too, because back in the day, Shane Gillis would have been an uh, Uber driver. Yeah, done, You'd have no done. outlet. Well, there, there's a that's whole thing to that, it. too, like where people I used not so much anymore, but people used to ask me 10 years ago, uh, was like as a radio guy, do you just resent podcasting? Do you re and I go, there's a sense of like starting on third thinking you hit a home run, you know, but at the same time. Like, I remember I was there. I saw it. I was not like – I'm not like a part of their crew. I'm not trying to name drop or anything. But I grew up on the east side. So in the 90s, you saw the Big Brother Skateboard Magazine dudes. And those were the guys who went on to become jackass, like the jackass crew, okay? And th that faction of the jackass crew that wasn't BAMs from, from the Pennsylvania. And uh, so I was in the periphery and I would see the level of what you had to do to get a good skate part in a video and then market that video and distribute it, you know? And I, I, I think now kids can be like, I, I feel like I'm good. Bobby, film this. And then just boom, it's on YouTube. Right. And I like the barrier between creative creativity and feeling like you have the ability to do it. Um, 
you could hear like Corolla talk about Corolla and Kimball talk about like when they were making Man Show, there was always that feeling of like the weight of the world is on us to try to get this to be a thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We have to fucking grind. Now I like I genuinely feel whether you're a musician, comic, actor, writer, there's there's not that Im- just like impossible resistance. That that abstract resistance you feel, which where you're is like, good and bad. Am I going to be a real? Yeah, writer? which is good and right. bad. Go, of course, it's good and bad because you get the the market gets flooded with yes, bullshit, not very good stuff. Yes. You know, yeah. but yeah. but the cream I rises to the top though. Yeah, no matter what. for sure, for sure. Fucking, we solved a lot of problems tonight. Yeah, we pretty much we solved gun crisis. We have solved yeah, tech better in L.A. Everything, dude. Mike, um, we got to get fun. Brendan on a plane. That's right. All right, go. You saved our ass, though. We wanted to. We, we were like, we gotta get Mike here because we wanted a guest, and we haven't talked to you in a long time. And uh, I'm very happy with one last question. Yes. How is your jujitsu scale of one to ten? You're rolling with some monsters. Yes. What is? You're a purple belt. I am. Okay. Now you're gi, no gi. Are you comfortable both. with both? I like, I like both. both. Yeah, I like really, good I really fundamentals, like. huh? I I just love, I top love, game guy, bottom game, bottom game, I'm, ankle I, lock guy, <laughs> new wave guy. What's I've, going on? I've had to become a bottom game guy, like really work Especially on my guard. You train because I, I I always trained with people who, if I was going to go with people around my size, yeah, regardless of skill level, I always felt like, well, I can muscle them. Yeah, you before, but, but but right when I began, not because I trained with. Only exclusively with Orlando Sanchez and, and like Hamilo and, and they would literally just pass me around like a crack whore and they'd fuck me up. Hell but then yeah. when I developed so a, a game, I started to feel like I'm not that athletic naturally or, or limber, <clears throat> but I could pass guard and smack. And, and I got that game and it started to work for a while. Now I go over there and it's just monsters that I can't impose yeah, you're my not, will. Yeah, you're not doing that with Tim Kennedy. So I'm starting his, to, exactly. He's, yes. a, he's yeah, the gorilla. And, you know, Tim, the worst thing about Tim is not only will he fuck he fucks me up but he tells me about how shitty i am every oh, so, of the way. yeah he's, he just loves to put you in pain oh it's and he's oh, oh he's, he'll, he'll, i'll like i'll put him in lockdown if like i'm i'm like scrambling to get half guard right and i'll just try to lock it he's like oh you're putting me in lockdown that's so cute and there's fucking put <laughs> face right and like break out I get, of it. when like, i'm oh. here when i'm here i'll get a text from him sometimes i'll be like we're training at 7.30 in the morning. You've been warned. I'm like, I'm not going to be there. So I thank you. Videotape it for me. I'll watch you guys. I'll, be, I'll come and watch. Yeah. I got to catch this plane, B. All right, All right dude. Buddy. Love Mike, you guys. I'll be in uh, Phoenix, Arizona this Friday. Stand up live. Two shows, one special night. And then it's Omaha, Nebraska, and Kansas City. Ooh. Yeah. Come Missouri. see me, guys. Come see me at uh, in San Antonio, Texas. LOL. August 24, 25, 26. September 1 and 2. Wise guys. Salt Lake City, and uh, we love you. Love Mike, you guys. Mike, Mike you're the thank best. you. You're the Jesus, best. Nice spread, Mike. Thank you. Nice Jack. fucking spread, dude. Yeah, thanks, bro. All right. That's fucking great. Oh, we got to thank the – let me thank the Drinking Bros. I want to thank the uh, – also thank the Drinking Bros podcast with Dan Halloway. And, boys. And Ross Patterson. Thank you, guys. Great you guys love are you guys. awesome for letting us use this awesome – Amazing it's fucked, it's fucked Brennan up because now he wants this kind of depth behind himself. Yep. <laughs> Love uh, you guys. Look Thank for you. the fighter and kid Drink thing to bros. change.